Uh, good morning. My name is Corey Redekop. I'm the Director of Policy and Stakeholder Relations here at the Burnaby Board of Trade. And uh, it's Small Business Week, so we're thrilled to be kicking off uh, Small Business Week with uh, Isabel, who's, who's, who chatted with us before in the, in, uh, the summer, which seems like a lifetime ago, um, back, back in July. But uh, thrilled to have you back here again. And really, small business, depend, whether you define it as under 50, other under 100, however you're defining small business, it, it, the, the facts remain it, uh, and the stats are there. Small business is the, a huge economic driver. It, it, it is the vast majority of our businesses. It is the vast majority of our jobs. It is the vast majority of our GDP. Uh, and, and it's the vast majority of those businesses that um, really have had to, um, uh, uh, have really felt the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We hit the, here at the Board of Trade, the Chamber of Commerce have been doing everything we can do to help our, the breadth of our business community, but we know the small business community is really the heart of, of, our, of our local economy here in Burnaby and our community. So thrilled to have you here today um, to learn, learn a little bit more from, from Isabel. Always happy to have her here to share her energy and her uh, perspectives and, and insights. So uh, looking forward to that. I do want to uh, start off by acknowledging that this event has everything uh, that the Board of Trade does is being held on the traditional uh, territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish nations. So uh, thanks for that. Um, and I do want to mention our annual partners, who are the organizations who uh, really do a ton throughout the year to support the Board of Trade as an organization um, and, and kind of our, our, our foundational what we do. So that's the, uh, the platform level, the Burnaby Now, and the BCIT School of Business and Media. Our gold partners are Pacific Blue Cross, Simon Fraser University, Fortis, BC, Electronic Arts Canada, ABC Recycling of Douglas College, and our silver partners are Alexander College, Trans Mountain, Appia Development, the Port of Vancouver, and Scotiabank. Huge thanks to them. Uh, we, we are an, uh, uh, a small, uh, not-for-profit organization. We, we do a ton of, of, of work for a team of six or so, but um, really it is the, it's the people who are on our board. It's these corporate citizens that you see on the screen here who really help us make sure that what we do is, is possible. Um, so oh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so you can see uh, uh, everything there. Um, so I'm going to uh, kick off here um, and, and pass it over to, to uh, Isabel here in just a sec. Um, but as I mentioned, this is Small Business Week. So I'll go to the, at the end, we have a whole, I'll go over the details, but we have a whole week of free programming for our, our members in the business community. Um, and, and as I said, today is, is the kickoff of that. So we're really pleased to have uh, Isabel uh, Mercier Turcotte to uh, here to speak. And Isabel, as I mentioned, was here in, in July. And, and if you missed that session, um, was just was just tremendous. And, and um, I, I think we, we call Isabel a, a no-nonsense dynamo. And I think that probably sums it up pretty well based on, on, on my experience uh, getting to know you over the last couple of months. Uh, and really, she's born to catapult passionate entrepreneurs and thought leaders to build businesses and brands uh, that are designed to make life uh, better. And, 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 and Isabel really is, is one of North America's top business influencers. She's a best-selling author, um, uh, a two-time TEDx speaker with only over two and a half million views, which good, good job. We were all bragging that one of my, one of my rants during uh, COVID was, has our most views at 500 or something. So 2.5 million, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll got a long way to go to catch up on that. Um, uh, but Isabel really brings uh, 25 years of branding, marketing, customer service experience um, and, and expertise. And really that, that's the piece that I think was, was fascinating about your last talk. It, it's, it's really that, that, that uh, intersection between branding and marketing and the customer experience and how all that comes together to tell a compelling story and to make a business uh, really uh, uh, excel. Um, I it was interesting to hear that uh, Isabel co-founded uh, her first seven-figure business a few years out of her teens, um, and, and this became, uh, which became one of the most awarded branding firms in Canada. Um, Isabel is a fitness fanatic too, which I was, was uh, fascinated to learn, uh, an avid yogi, uh, to deadlifting over 250 pounds. I, I don't know what this, you're, you're really putting me to shame here. My, you can see I don't give myself an introduction because it would be nowhere, nowhere near this exciting. Um, so we're, again, we're really pleased and, and excited to have Isabel here to speak to our group. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself uh, um, in the background here and, and, and please join me in welcoming uh, our speaker, uh, uh, Isabel, here. And oh, there we go. The screen's over to you. I'm going to unpin myself and you're good to go. Oh, do we still have you there, Isabel? Yeah, you're muted. Okay, how about there this? we go? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna say that I don't think you've ever been muted in your life. There we go. Sure. That is very rare. I was just saying how honored I was to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation of kicking off this uh, Small Business Week. Uh, you know, as a proud small business owner, proudly serving small business owners, uh, it is a pleasure to uh, to be here. And of course, we're going to talk about helpfulness is the new hustle. I absolutely, truly believe that. 
And the talk today is about how to rapidly grow your business impact and influence by serving, not selling. And if you're someone who want more clients, right? Of course, everybody here wants more client, but if you're someone that wants more client, but hate selling, then welcome to the new era that will most that you will most likely love and thrive in and that era is specifically the era of helpfulness now i do have a question for you which is is your marketing so helpful that people would happily pay for it that's a that's a potent question is your marketing so helpful that people would happily pay for it and i wholeheartedly believe and i've seen undeniable proof that the key to breaking through the noise isn't to be louder contrary to popular belief it's becoming profoundly helpful and relevant operating from a true place of generosity right a true place of helpfulness is what your ideal clients resonate with and are attracted to because you know what let's face it if you sell something you make a customer today, right? But if you help and delight someone, you earn a customer for life because help beats hype every time. And I'm sure that you would agree that we are in the middle of a whole lot of uncertainty right now. And uncertainty, in uncertainty, yes, helpfulness beats hype, period. And of course, are uncertain times scary? Yeah, you bet they are. You know, I don't know anyone who gets up in the morning and goes, I love uncertain times. You know, it's so much fun. But, you know, I mean, here's the thing. What I do know is in every problem, therein lies the next solution. And in every solution, therein lies the next problem. This time, right now, will define what kind of entrepreneur you are and what kind of entrepreneur you want to become. I think that being an entrepreneur comes with a lot of responsibilities. You know, entrepreneurs are true problem solvers at heart. Everything that's been created on this planet was created out of the necessity to solve a problem. Your prospects and clients need and want your help now more than ever. This is the single greatest business opportunity since electricity, actually, in my opinion. And if you look past the old ways of marketing, and if you look past the old ways of customer, customer service, what you'll find is a once in a lifetime opportunity to massively propel your business forward in ways that were unthinkable even just six months ago. The key to breaking through customer cynicism, right, and competitors messaging clutter is not shouting louder, it's becoming truly relevant and massively helpful. Helpfulness is the new hustle, and my hope is for our time today to inspire you to become an entrepreneur that lives and breathes and operates to make people's lives better by serving rather than selling. Now, I'm known uh, as the Simon Tal of branding, positioning, and business growth. And I'm going to choose to see this as a huge compliment because although this guy is crazy, uh, this guy also sure knows how to spot and catapult talent forward. I'm just, however, a hell of a lot more fashionable. Now, in the past 25 years, I've created a seven-figure branding agency right out of my teens, a seven-figure coaching business. I've produced and hosted the number one branding online TV show called Leap TV, which you can uh, go see at leaptv.com. I've worked with small, absolutely local and inspiring clients, and of course, also large, iconic brands. I won Entrepreneur of the Year, and I'm one of North America's top business influencers. As, uh, as per my introduction, I'm also a two-time TEDx speaker with over 2.6 now, 2.6 million views. I have to update my, uh, my, my content. But I'm not saying this, I'm not sharing this to have a beautiful tap on the back. No, 
I'm telling you this because let me tell you, I have been through my fair share of reinvention and reposition to become and stay the first, the best, and the only in my 25 year uh, in business. And I've done that successfully with hundreds of entrepreneurs and thought leaders around the world to fulfill my quest and the quest of Leap Zone to make life better for others um, and for myself, of course, and for us to become of outmost service. Because being of service feels amazing, first of all, and it gets people talking. And if you want to grow up your business with more ease, get people talking about you. The easiest way to grow a business in any economy is for your customers to grow it with you. Why would you take on that, that task on your own? But that of course only occurs if you deliver a service or a product that people want and a customer experience that's worth talking about. Word of mouth influences more than 50% of all purchases on the planet, yet we take this golden fact for granted every day. We assume that our customers will talk about us, but they won't unless you give them something to talk about. HelloFresh does this really well. HelloFresh leverages word of, word of mouth beautifully with their sharing is caring campaign. HelloFresh is food, fresh food, fresh ingredients in a box, ready to cook, right? And you can actually gift, as a client of HelloFresh, I can gift a box to someone that I know would love and appreciate this, making me a bit of a hero and of course them uh, uh, in front of a potential prospect, right? So sharing is caring. Pop Chips, for those of you chip lovers, Pop Chips does the same. They know that having a happy customer advocate for the goodness of their product is way more effective than any other marketing strategies when you want to grow and when you want to grow fast. I, uh, I was raised in a hairdresser salon and my mom, man, my mom rocked it. You know, this woman lived to surprise and delight her customers. She was unbeatable for customer service, and as a result, she constantly had a three-month waiting list. And we're talking, we lived in a village with about 2,000 people with flies in the summer. So three-month waiting list in such a small town like this, you got to be doing something right. Um, and here's what I learned, you know, I learned to listen for the unsaid. People say a lot in between words with their energy, with their body language. I learned to always look for ways to wow and delight. I learned to serve with love, attention, and intention. Remembering that, you know, Jane loves peppermint tea with one ice cube in it, or Paul loves a 10 second cold water rinse after his shampoo, right? Those are all little things that make a big difference. I also learned that the little things make a massive difference. And I remember being about nine years old and I was designing new hairstyles. I've always been a, an artist and I couldn't wait to get back from school to design new hairstyles and massage people's scalps and, hand, and massage hands as they're waiting. To make waiting fun and relaxing instead of frustrating. Who likes to wait, right? But when you're pampered while waiting, you make it an experience. Coming to our salon was a treat for people. And it was a treat that people craved. It was fun, it was pampering, and it was pure fuel for the soul. I know that every day, I remember this like it was yesterday, every day my mom would say, Isabel, who will you make life better for today, girl? And I'm this little kid, you know, and I'm like, yeah, who am I gonna make life better today? I'm gonna make life better for Jane today, and here's what I'm gonna do, right? And that's what I wanna double click on with you today. So on the agenda, um, I'm gonna share why the fight for attention is getting more and more difficult every day and why most communication efforts fail. I'm gonna share um, a threesome that's going to change your life and your business forever and get your head out of, the, out of the gutter. No, not that kind of threesome. And you're gonna learn cost-effective marketing ideas designed to help you build trust by making life better. And what I'll do is I'll also share with you a few resources to help you implement what you learned today, because we all know that knowing something is one thing, 
but implementing it is what gets truly great results. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, write them in the chat and write them down somewhere. I'll be happy to answer them at the end. This is where you can pick my brain a little bit deeper um, at the end of this presentation. Now, can you resolve algebra by chewing bubble gum? I guess the answer of that is of course not, right? Yet, I feel that that's what most people are doing when it comes to their marketing. Most business owners do not know what they stand for. They do not know what, what their brand stands for. They do not know what their clients and prospects need and want the most. They do not know what makes them different. And most of all, how to effectively communicate that difference. And let me tell you, if you don't know what makes you different, right? If you don't know what makes you the first, the best, or the only, how can you expect your clients and prospects to find you first and then choose you second? Eight billion video views daily on Facebook from 550 million users. A hundred billion Google searches per month. 70 billion blog posts published every month on WordPress alone. You know, there are Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and, you know, 7 billion on WordPress alone. And 4 billion people on social media every single day. And there are millions of businesses with long runways, my friends, meaning that they have a hell of a lot more money to invest in marketing than you do which makes their runway much longer than yours, meaning they can go much longer without making a client than you. You can't beat them at this game. You can't outrun them on their own highway, but what you can do is take a trip on a different highway. What those stats tell me is that there's a hell of a lot of people that are looking for solutions, looking for the next thing that will help them move the needle forward. And by the way, sending one email to sell your solution is not an effective conversion strategy. People re need reminder constantly that you and only you is the best solution for them. A lot of people get disappointed after sending an email when it didn't actually convert. That's just setting yourself up for massive disappointment. So instead of trying to sell something, be more relevant and extremely helpful. Now, you know, of course, having said that, being relevant and helpful is a hell of a lot easier when you first know and own what you stand for. Be clear about what business you're in and what you want to be known for because that should be the driving force behind all of your marketing and all of your communications. Most people think that branding is a logo and a website. And let me tell you, it's a hell of a lot more than that. Is, a, brand, is a, a logo and a website important to a brand? Of course, without that, there would be no visual triggers to remind you if you love this brand or if this brand is helpful to you. But branding is a lot more than that. Branding is how people feel when they buy your product or service. Branding is how people feel about the experience that you're providing. Because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Brands are defined by people and emotions, not by companies and markets like it used to. Knowing what your brand stands for means having a clear brand DNA. And a clear brand DNA is the foundation that makes you you and that is designed to unleash your genius in ways that resonates with your ideal clients. And there are 10 key ingredients to having a clear, a clear brand DNA. But these four that I'm about to share here are a massive, awesome start. So your internal mission, which is how you want to leave people feeling. At Leap Zone, we want to leave people feeling on fire and unstoppable. And it's why we do what we do. Everything we do has to deliver on leaving people feeling on fire and unstoppable. The second is your brand promise. Your brand promise is your measurable accountability. A measurable accountability is 
the, the bridge between what people want and what you're delivering to fill that gap. There's a company called um, Provident Security. And Provident Security is a company here in Vancouver, actually Vancouver-born company that is now North America wide. But you know, their brand promise is a five providing a five minute response time in a sea of an hour and a half. People paid for a five minute response time, but every other company gives them half an hour to an hour and a half response time. So they came up with a brand promise of, we will be at your door helping you if an alarm goes off within five minutes. Now that's a strong brand promise. Our brand promise at Leap Zone is we promise clarity, pivotal shifts and momentum. And we deliver that come rain or shine. Me, my team, anybody on our team, the way we write emails, the way we answer phones, the way we do what we do, the way we decide to create what we want to create has to deliver on our promise of clarity, pivotal shifts and momentum. The third ingredient is your X factor. That's the thing that makes you completely irresistible. It's the thing that it's like the tipping point, right? It's everything that you do, but then there's a framework, there's a methodology, there is a something completely unique about what you do or about how you deliver your genius that gets people to go, oh my God, where have you been all my life? And an example, our X factor at Leap Zone is that we're a branding, marketing, and coaching agency all under one roof, which means that when clients work with us, they get to work on all aspects of their business. They get to work on the outcome, right? Their objectives and their growth. They also get to work on their overcome. Overcome. There are many things to overcome in order to reach an outcome. And that totally sets us apart. Because instead of having to work with three, four companies who won't actually uh, work together and will be siloed with one another, you work with many different people under one roof that all talk to each other many, many, many times a week. So what sets you apart? Why would I choose you rather than someone else? And then there's the interrupter. That is your provocative brand stand. It's the thing that will get to divide the room. Either people, it's a statement basically that gets people to go, oh my God, I believe in what she believes. I believe in what she says. What she says makes sense. Or they'll say, she's on crack. There is no middle here. There is no gray zone. Gray zone in branding is extremely costly. It's not effective. Now it's better to be talked about in good or bad than be in a gray zone. Now, of course, between good or bad, I'll pick being talked about in the good. But it is worse to be in the gray zone than um, be talked about either way. And the interrupter, I'll give you an example. Um, our, one of our interrupters is be massively relevant and helpful or you will die. I have to prove this, right? The point of an interrupter is to divide the room and to get people to go, holy craps, I believe in that, help me. And I've got to create content, educational based content that will continuously prove my premise, basically my interrupter. Your interrupter alone is what I'm saying is can actually give you months of content inspiration. Now, these are four key factors that if you're not crystal clear on, it will be difficult to actually be uh, noticed and be relevant. And so now I want to introduce you to the threesome that will change your life and business forever. And this threesome is called, is what we call the Leap Zone Helpfulness Pledge, also known internally here as the Impactful Three. But it comes with a warning. This pledge requires a hell of a lot of guts and courage. And it also brings huge rewards because it takes guts and courage to create amazingly helpful material and then give it all away for free against name and email, right? Which is the currency online. It takes a lot of guts and courage to put yourself out there and tell it like you see it. it takes a lot of guts and courage to trust that your people, your tribe of prospects and clients 
will reward you eventually with their attention and their business. And it takes guts and courage to go above and beyond the call of duty to make a real difference. And it, and truly though, man, is it ever massively re rewarding. There is no better reward than helping someone and seeing that you've made a difference. Now, let's look at the first ingredient of the helpful pledge. And that first ingredient is outshine, which is all about acts of kindness, right? Kindness makes a big difference. This is all about creating or highlighting acts of kindness and continually inspire your customers and prospects to share theirs. But to do that through your brand. So I want to give you some examples of that. FedEx. FedEx has the Made Possible Buy campaign. Team member or community heroes doing random acts of kindness. And you may have heard this, but there's a FedEx driver that took time out of his busy delivery day to shovel snow from a porch and sidewalk of a woman who had recently lost her husband to cancer. And that was caught by her surveillance camera. Now, he didn't know that. He just went, you know what? There's obviously someone there. They can't get out. I'm delivering a package. Let's actually make someone's day, right? Let's create a random act of kindness. Um, made possible uh, by campaign. So now that went viral online. What does that do? It brightens someone's day. And better yet, it inspires others to do the same. That news, as I said, went viral and was highlighted in the news. Now, if we dig and we look at what is FedEx's internal mission, right? How do they want to leave people feeling? Is they want to leave people feeling cared for. So, of course, they align their actions. They're not perfect. Do they make mistakes? Yes. But at the base, they align their actions and their team's actions with how they want to leave people feeling. Second example is us at LeapZone. We have a campaign called Love Matters and um, where everyone on our team is responsible to gift, to gift a coaching session or an equine guided transformation session to someone who needs it but can't afford it. And we also have a thing for leaving Margarita's book or you know, a five or $10 bill in, a, in random places, like a book at chapters or a random surprise when I, um, when I try a pair of jeans in stores, kind of like leaving little surprises in, in back pockets. <laughs> I just love, I love you know, our brand at Leap Zone and every single one of us loves to make life better, right? So random surprises to delight people go a long way. And it's not always, it's often, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, people don't know that it's us, right? Anonymous? Yeah, anonymous is the word I was looking for. You know, it's a lot of that is anonymously done and some of it is not anonymously done because we want it to travel online and it, we want it to reach more people, right? So, and, and how do we want to leave people feeling? On fire and unstoppable, right? We want to delight people on a daily basis. The third example is Ritz Carlton. They have a going and above and beyond call of duty. You know, they, they turned a lost teddy bear, and I'm sure some of you have, have heard this, it's gone viral online as well. It, they turned a lost teddy bear into an online sensation. And it was all about a kid leaving his favorite teddy bear, teddy bear behind. And, you know, as the parents and them were on their flight back home, the kid figured out, oh my God, where is teddy bear? And so the parents connected with Ritz Carlton and what they did is they actually took pictures of the teddy bear everywhere at the pool, enjoying an extra day of vacation, dining, um, took pictures at the gym and, and they would send emails to the child, um, just letting, them, letting him know that he was enjoying a few more days of vacation and that he was gonna actually come back home, right? And yet, what do you think that did? for their parents. These parents are clients for life and they're gonna talk about this experience forever. Ritz Carlton's internal mission is to leave people feeling like family. I think that that did that very well, right? So my question to you is, how do you wanna leave people feeling? And what will you implement in your business today to deliver that feeling? 
Because a brand that shines with kindness is a brand that makes life better. And a brand that makes life better gets rewarded with the satisfaction of contribution, of course, and a whole lot of attention from media and ideal prospects and clients. So make a list of at least 12 acts of kindness that align with your brand foundation and implement one right away. It'll make you feel great and it will you know, make people talking about you in good and sharing. A lot of the stuff that's being shared online right now are good things, things that actually help. Now, the second ingredient of the helpfulness pledge is out teach. As I said earlier, in every problem, therein lies the next solution. And in every solution, therein lies the next problem. Be a brand that contributes in sharing and teaching what you know. You know, you're good at what you do. Share your brilliance freely. Sharing is caring and caring creates trust. And trust turns prospects into customers and mainly it turns customers into loyal fans, fans who will talk about you and refer you and blog about you. So here are some examples to outteach. Dunk is a pool company. Right? Uh, the, their tagline is swimmingly good reading <laughs> for their blog. So what Dunk has done during the crash of 2009, because let me tell you, you know, as you can imagine, if you can't put food on the table, the chances of you investing in a pool for your backyard are pretty freaking slim. So what they did is answer every pool related question that they could find online. And by doing that, they went from certain death to becoming and being the most trusted pool company in North America. And all they did is decided to be helpful and educate their clients and prospects about what to do, what not to do in a daily Q&A blog post. Dunk promises a healthy and happy backyard. So through SEO and through a lot of questions that were answered online, they became the most sought after company. And of course, not only survived, but completely thrived through this 2009 crash, which is, I know, not the same, but definitely similar to what we're in right now. The second example is Trello. Trello has an educating mascot. Trello, by the way, is a project, uh, project management software. And this company is the most helpful and creative that I've seen in a long time. They have super helpful and creative ways to share and how to use Trello in a variety of different ways. Cooking collaborations during COVID, they had a whole training around how you can, with your friends and family, have cooking, um, cooking moments virtually through sharing things on a Trello board. It's brilliant. And I will say that Trello gives us, gives me, I receive a newsletter. I don't like newsletters, by the way. I don't often read them. But there are a few that I do read. Trello is definitely one of them. Every time I read the Trello newsletter, I learn something that will make me more effective, faster, and that will, you know, help my team be more effective. And that is super valuable to me. Third example would be Lead TV. You know, branding and business growth show, which um, is produced uh, by me and LeapZone. And I'll tell you, I invest a lot of time in sharing free, super entertaining and valuable strategies to help business owners be the first, the best or the only. I have well over 70 Leap TV episodes and over 50 Leap Tools tutorials, all free, all on our website. And our promise at LeapZone, as I said earlier, is we promise clarity, pivotal shifts, and momentum. And we know and understand that the more we educate and the more we help, the more we create trust. The more we create trust, the more we will be top of mind. The more we're top of mind, the more we are the one people come to for help. Now, there are other examples. McDonald's, for example, not that it's my favorite restaurant by, by no means, but McDonald's has a real food series. And it's called, you know, say it like it is. It addresses the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
and they win big as a result of that. On social media, a lot of people doubt vocally that the food at McDonald's is fake food. So what they've done is a campaign where there is the potato uh, cultivator, potato farmer, that's in his field going, I've got a question from so-and-so on Twitter, and they will name names, and say, your question is, hey, I doubt that the, that the potatoes are real, blah, 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 blah. And then there's John in his potato field going, I am John. I am one of the main suppliers of, of McDonald's this region. And yes, these are my potatoes and they're real. So it is about being helpful and being real and addressing the good, the bad, and the ugly before your clients, right? That's the whole, the whole point of that. So what can you do to educate your prospects and clients? You know, a Facebook Live series on a weekly basis. We have the No BS Thursday Facebook Live series. You can have your own podcast. Better yet, you can be interviewed on other people's podcasts. It's actually way easier to manage and it allows you to impact that community, but also reach a new community that you would not have had um, opportunity to reach before. You can have valuable weekly articles on LinkedIn. That's absolutely free. Um, an evergreen webinar or a masterclass or an audio program. Because a brand that educates free, freely and frequently is a brand that makes life better. And as I said before, a brand that makes life better gets rewarded with the satisfaction of contribution and a whole lot of attention from ideal clients. Now, the last but certainly not least ingredient of the helpfulness pledge, also known as the uh, threesome of awesome, is outwit. Outwit. The smart way to be successful is to be massively valuable. Once you're valuable, success has absolutely no choice, right? It has no choice to reveal itself. Success is a byproduct of being of value. And when you learn to leverage your customer's creativity, ingenuity, and love for your brand, you win. So here are some examples of outwitting. GoPro, everybody knows the camera GoPro. GoPro highlights the creative ways their customers use their products, right? Skateboarders, surfers, bikers, all love to showcase their brilliance. And every time they do that, it's an ad for GoPro. Everybody loves to showcase the, the shenanigans that they do or the crazy flips that they do. And when you think about it, if I've researched it, then GoPro's purpose is to help you capture life as you live it, share the experience and pass on the stoke. And they do that very well. And all their, their um, customers, they love to pass on the stoke. And every time they pass on the stoke, it's an ad for GoPro, free ad for GoPro, might I add. Survivor, the show Survivor, does this super well. They allow super fans to come up with and design challenges for their show. Man, imagine being a super fan and having a chance to be a part of the brilliance of this show, right? And they actually give shout out as well of the designer of that particular course or that particular challenge. And for a fan, there's nothing, there's no greater satisfaction for that. And for the show, they get to have brilliant people design courses and, and challenges for recognition, for absolutely free. That rewards their super fan and gives them uh, amazing uh, creativity within their show without paying any more, which is beautiful. Simply Piano showcases growth and, prog and progress. They know and they highlight very well. They, what they do is they highlight their customers' progress and wins. And that's super engaging and encouraging. I know that you've seen on YouTube a Simply Piano ad. They are everywhere, borderline a little annoying. But truly, what they don't say, hey, if you want to play piano, buy our app. What they, what they showcase is, week one, week two, week three, week four of people's progress. And if you're one who wants to play piano and you're inspired by that, what are you gonna pick? A, an app that says, hey, we can teach you learn piano, to learn the piano, or someone who shows you the progress that you can actually have within a simple amount of weeks, right? And Simply Piano, you know, does that absolutely really well. 
Um, there's, you know, Vimeo. Vimeo leverages their super fans as well, but they they leverage their super fan for support. So what they do, I, like, I find that so smart. It's a great idea. It allows them the ability to involve their avid clients and super fans to actually support and teach their newer clients in customer support. So they are, they're rewarding these support people in different ways than monetary value. So they have, what better ways than to have your super fans and your super users actually do support for you in, in your company? And at Leave Zone, another example at Leave Zone, we created a flash mob. And I believe Kathy Cousel, that is here today, was there at the flash mob in Gastown, Vancouver, to promote our Built to Rock program. Because we want to leave people feeling on fire and unstoppable. And developing a talking head video, we didn't feel that, that, that it would deliver on that. So we created an awesome flash mob in the middle of Gastown, early, I think it was a Sunday morning. Um, we invited a bunch of clients, prospects, and people, even some people walking off the street kind of joined. And that was our way of leaving people feeling on fire and unstoppable and doing it in alignment with our brand. Contests, case studies, challenges, flash mobs, they're all free and uber fun ways to outdo yourself and certainly outwit your competitors. And a brilliant brand that engage that engages their clients and prospects is a brand, of course, that makes life better. And a brand that makes life better gets rewarded with the satisfaction of contribution and a whole lot of attention. I'm repeating this because I want this to get in and I want you to do something about it. Now, these are the three, impa the impactful threes, right? The threesome of awesome. But those come with a caveat. And this, this is the caveat. We all tell ourselves the exact same lie every single day. And that lie is that our customers are too busy, right? They're too busy to visit the website. They're too busy to watch the masterclasses. They're too busy to fill out a needs assessment form, which is absolutely not true. It's not about being too busy because here's the proof here. When you give someone the information that they want, in the format that they prefer, when they need it, the time that's necessary to consume that information suddenly magically appears. I've seen this time and time again. So if your marketing isn't working like you want it to, meaning if your marketing is not converting prospects into customers, then it's not about them being too busy. It's that what you're giving them is not relevant or helpful enough. When people have a problem that is painful enough, they will do and pay anything to find a good solution. In fact, the, 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 um, the reality is your prospects will buy. The question is, will they buy you or will they buy someone else? But they will buy and they will buy the people who they trust the most which means people who, who they hear from the most, which means people who educate them the most. So be louder and lose the battle or become massively relevant and helpful. Remember, if you sell something, you make a customer today. But if you help and delight someone, you earn a customer for life because help beats hype every time. So I think that my point, the point of this time together this morning or today, the point is this, when you are crystal clear about how you want to leave people feeling, which is your internal mission, when you're crystal clear about what makes you accountable, right? What your accountability is, which is your promise. When you're crystal clear about what makes you different and unique, which is your X factor, your key differentiator. And when you're crystal clear about what makes you relevant and seen, which is your interrupter. And of course, when you create marketing material that is so valuable that people would happily pay for it. What happens then? The right people will buy what you offer, period. The right people will buy what you offer, period. And you know what? My mom was right then and she's still right today. 
help beats hype every day and developing a growth strategy that makes life better and that brings in ideal clients that sure does not happen by accident right that happens by design and it all starts with you getting the right strategies in place and the right support and mentorship to help you get it done and done well and um Earlier, at the very beginning, I promised to give you a few ways to connect with me and my team to go deeper on what it takes to pivot to take your business to the next level, no matter what's happening in the world. The first way is to get my Get Paid Well for Your Genius Free Masterclass that it, I promise you is chock full of value and where, uh, where I share three major um, warning signs that your small business is set up to fail in today's economy and of course, I teach you what to do about it, right? I teach you how to fix that. And for those of you who know Dan Locke, Dan Locke said, this masterclass training will change the way potential clients see you forever. And Dan is known as the millionaire mentor. So it's absolutely free. You got you know, everything to gain. So go to leapzonestrategies.com slash get paid well to get free access. Now, the second thing, is an opportunity to get on a clarity call to identify the number one point of leverage for you to increase your relevance, your impact, and prospects, your prospect to client conversion. And, and I can say this with 100% confidence. My team and I, man, we're built, we're, we're built for these times and we're built to help with entrepreneurs uh, and thought leaders who are obsessed about making life better for themselves, making life better for their teams and their clients. And of course, who want to do that in a simple, impactful and differentiating way. And if that's you, and if you'd like to connect, uh, then that's your chance here to actually fill out the needs assessment so that we can get on, on that clarity call. And that's an opportunity for us to get to know each other, of course, and an opportunity for us to see if and how we can best help you grow. All you need to do is go to leapzonestrategies.com slash rise. And once you've filled it out, my business manager will connect with you to book your clarity call. And as you know now, I've said it a few times at LeapZone, we promise clarity, pivotal shifts, and momentum. And that's why we need to have this needs assessment filled, right? That's why we need to have a decent amount of information upfront about you, about your brand and your business, so that we can quickly get into the root of your biggest needle movers and of course deliver on our promise of being impactful and and helpful so leapzonestrategies.com slash rise we would love to get on a call with you to just explore to see what is the number one pivot here that you can um, implement to see immediate relief and immediate results and that's the thing, right? If you're wanting to grow, adapting to the new normal that COVID is creating is key. And positioning yourself as the first, the best, or the only in the eyes of your ideal clients is not an option. It's not an option. It's the only way for you to be able to hear, I would be a fool to work with anyone else but you, regardless of price. And our ultimate outcome at LeapZone is to help you get your business architecture, brand differentiation, and of course, helpfulness marketing in place so that you can thrive through COVID and well beyond COVID by creating the amount of income, impact, and inspiration that you want in the world. And most of all, to help you become a master at continuously positioning yourself and your brand as the number one choice, both online and offline, so that your ideal clients are compelled to choose you over anyone else. So these are the places that you can actually connect with us and me. And I'm totally happy to answer. There's a few more minutes left here. I'm totally happy to answer questions if there are any. And if there's, you know, our questions, of course, um, someone will monitor this here. And I would also welcome hearing a few gems or insights that you've gained from our time together today. So are there any questions? Where are we at here time-wise? Well, th thanks to the both for that. I saw, I saw there was one question I saw come up here um, from Sue, I think it was. When you're talking about, it was back when you were talking about the brand. Um, and, and the question was, 
who really determines a brand? I mean, can a business really do that? Or do you listen to what the market has defined the brand as and go from there? Um, and how, where I guess horse and buggy, which, which one comes first or which one's more important? Horse and buggy for sure. I mean, ultimately you decide, you know, perception is reality in branding. The key is to make sure that what you are offering is needed and wanted, obviously. So if you're selling, um, if you're selling a widget that absolutely is no need to anybody, it doesn't matter what you say and, and how you promote that it's the best thing since sliced bread. If it's not wanted or needed, then obviously it's not going to sell. But the key is to really figure out what is the top of mind problem of your ideal clients? What is the biggest pain in the butt for, for your ideal clients? And then you look at what you are really, really good at. And then you craft a, th those, those key ingredients, of course, helps you. And this is what we teach in our Built to Rock program, is every single element of a brand so that it actually resonates with your ideal clients. But first, you got to know who you want to work with, why, and what are their top of mind problems? What stops them from sleeping at night? And then you need to create a brand and offering that actually offerings that deliver on that. Perfect. Thanks for that. Any other questions you can throw into the chat box there if anybody has something before we wrap up uh, here uh, quickly. One, um, I was chatting with somebody offline, not related to this, but it kind of blends in because we were talking about this, the, 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 a lot of people are moving to kind of freemium models or, or you're trying to be, yeah, you're trying to provide lots of content and, and you hope that it, it comes back. And they were very discouraged because they kind of had felt they had done, all, done that, they had curated all this material and built this, this group of people and, and everybody was taking, but they didn't, there, there was never every, any, they weren't converting anybody. Nobody was coming back. They would take, take all the free advice, take all the tips and tools, but then never actually come back to them for what their actual business was. Is that, is that a, would they, is it a long game and they were just looking too short? Is there a problem on their conversion? Um, or is that just sometimes that's just the way people are, they're jerks and you're not going to deal with it. So what well, a, Yeah. Well, first of all, there will always be people who will consume content for free forever and ever and ever. I mean, those are, there are yeah. some in any industry, right? However, free content has to come with a strategy. It's not just, oh, I'm going to throw free content. If you listen to any Leap TV episode, at the end of it, there's always a call to action to help a client and something to actually go subscribe to or something to either buy or something to uh, uh, enroll in. There has to be an intelligent pathway to, yeah. so we have a, a, in our nurture campaign, for example, we have a 72 week nurture campaign. So wherever you come from, whether it's Leap TV, whether it's Leap Tools, whether it's our needs assessment, at some point you will actually access our 72 week um, nurture campaign. And for every 10 free, I will help you for free, there is one particular service offering or, um, or ways to engage with us with dollars and the biggest mistake i see when people do free marketing which is what we've just talked about for the past hour is that they don't ask for anything you have to have a clear plan you have to know what the end game is when i created uh, lead tv i knew what the end game was i knew that it was filling out a needs assessment or funneling into uh, lead tools or the next piece right so it's very clear we have to reverse engineer and go what do we want to eventually eventually what do we want people to enroll in and what's going to be the best entry door in free marketing and that the piece here that's important is seeding it you need to learn seeding as you give free content you need to start seeding and seeding could be talking about a client's result um, seeding could be giving your own results. Seeding could be talking about one of the things, like I just, I just did that. I modeled that very well a minute ago. This is what we teach in our Built to Rock program. I, I did that naturally, but that truly is seeding. It's like, hey, if you want to learn more about that, go see Built to Rock, right? So it's a question of a, of a couple of different areas. Mm -hmm. When there is non-conversion, we need to look at probably five to 10 key areas to make sure that they all are working well together. 
No, very good. And I think, yeah, I think you, you, you don't get what you don't ask for, right? So if you, if you haven't built that strategy where you're, they're going to have those points where if they wanted to engage you as a client, whether, or as a, as a provider, whether it's the moving company, the, 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 the Ritz Carlton, whatever the example was, you, yeah. yeah, you need to be building in those pieces for them. Well, mm -hmm. I, well, um, I mean, we're, we're one minute here to, to 11, so I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you so much for, for joining us again and, and zooming in to, to, to Burnaby here to chat with our, with our members. That was fantastic. I, I know, uh, Luciano, you put some links into the, the chat box there, so we'll capture those and send them out to everybody. So if you, if you didn't capture those and everybody or those who, who uh, were on the call and maybe aren't on are now, we'll make sure everybody who signed up for the event gets those links and gets your information so that they can follow up directly with you if they'd like. And, um, but really, uh, Isabel, appreciate you coming in and helping us kick off uh, Small Business Week here um, uh, for with this session. We really appreciate that. Um, I do want to mention that to the upcoming this, this week we have a, a full a full week of, of events. So uh, tomorrow is, we're releasing a, a, a there's a discussion with Minister Mary Ng and MP Terry Beach on the uh, economic response to COVID. So um, that'll be coming out um, the, the the that discussion tomorrow uh, on uh, Wednesday uh, at 9:30 we have the CRA. Um, who doesn't want, who doesn't love spending Wednesday morning with the CRA? But uh, it's a, a great chance to get some uh, tips and tricks on how to make sure that not just a tax time but throughout the year you're maximizing what you need to do as a business owner to, to uh, minimize your, your tax burden and do that correctly. Uh, our, our Thursday Small Business Week event is finding the right people for your business. Um, uh, for some people, some businesses, they've never needed more uh, more staff because they've, they've, they've pivoted or they've had a, a new staff requirement. I know some people are, the last thing they're thinking of right now is building a team, but um, now would be a good time to be building that, that infrastructure in place and, and, and how you actually build that right uh, team around your business. And then on Friday morning, if you've not been to one of our NRG mornings, they're a ton of fun uh, at 8.30 in the morning on Zoom. If you don't think you can network properly on Zoom, uh, give me a shot on this one. Um, it's a ton of fun. It's very structured and facilitated, so you meet a lot of different uh, interesting people and a really chance to share a little bit about what you do and, and uncover that ideal client and be, and be thinking about how uh, we as a network can be supportive to one another and, and, uh, and help. Uh, make those connections. Uh, and then lastly, on the 5th, please, everyone, sign up. I don't care who you are, where you are. It's a free live stream event of the Burnaby Business Excellence Awards, our 21st anniversary. Um, it was, it's, it's, I, I think it's never more, more important to, to highlight the businesses who are doing great things in our community. We didn't know what the outcome, what, what the uptake would be from the community, whether anybody would want to be engaged in, in an awards program during such sort a of challenging time. But we've had more nominations than ever before, and there's some really inspirational stories going on in our, in our community. So this is a, a great chance for you to hear uh, some really interesting uh, businesses that are that are uh, that are in our in our city, and find out uh, and help us celebrate who the winners of those awards are. So, so again, thanks, Isabel, so much for for coming out today. Uh, those of you in the call, uh, really appreciate you joining us um, uh, for today's session. Hope to see you for the rest of the small business week. Um, again, stay stay safe, stay strong out there, and we will chat again soon. Thanks, everybody.